we didn't want taps in the house don't use gas cylinder in this house we don't use petrol the abundance of energy that falls on the house in the form of heat light water which is have to become part of that web of life Reva and Ranjan Malik are residents of the ever expanding city of Bengaluru. Their lives were not different from other city dwellers, but today they are proof that a sustainable, eco-friendly lifestyle is possible even in a city like Bengaluru. This is the house that Reva and Ranjan Malik built from scratch. Technically known as a ramped earth mud house, the structure includes sustainable and eco-friendly elements. So yeah, many people ask us this thing that you know what uh, made us come here. I was fortunate to grow up in the hills. I think I have uh, learned a lot from the mountains, if I can say that right now. A lot inspired by the rural part of our country. Uh, uh, inspiration from people who live in simple uh, manner, who live very simple lives, minimal thing. I mean, not much in the house. I think taking inspiration from there we felt that yeah we also want to live by like this Before the couple made the move to Bengaluru they lived in Delhi and enjoyed the convenience that came with the lifestyle but there was an inexplicable itch for change Looking at the culture around at that time you know Delhi and uh, North India some way we felt uh, we were missing something you know something more cultural culturally rooted we wanted and having grown up in many places you know uh, because my father had a transferable job so we would also every 3 years move to different places there was this need also to just uh, grow roots somewhere and i think bangalore was the place that finally got chosen uh, we came to bangalore to see whether this is where we want to settle down we just fell in love with bangalore somewhere as we came to bangalore um, something kind of connected at a deeper level i think we resonated with the cultural environment here the place the weather everything the couple bought 3000 square feet land on the outskirts of bengaluru until 2018 the land was used for organic farming uh, as our daughter was growing up lives were too full of stuff too full of things you know and as if life was a journey where you keep accumulating stuff you know a tv a bigger tv a car a bigger car this and that so somewhere we felt that you know at least for a child if things are the most important things in the child's life then humans around become kind of lesser things so um, we said let's just walk into a zero space that didn't have all that in fact i call it the minimum viable home which actually isn't complete we uh, it's that minimum habitable system that you walk into and then you organize your life in it and as you organize your life you you pick some things you drop some things you modify some things and you kind of grow a home around yourself when it was time to start construction gram vidya an organization which promotes alternative and energy efficient technologies came to help them The couple chose stabilized ramped earth technology to build their house. Raw soil from the same land is used in this construction technique. The soil is mixed with different materials like gravel, sand and clay. A small amount of cement is also added to this mixture. This 5 or 10% cement acts as a stabilizer. It can increase the strength and durability of the structure. The mixture is rammed inside a frame till it gets compressed. It is then sun dried. The process is repeated till the intended height is achieved. The entire process took them little over 8 months. Mud structures are alive. They are living breathing systems. Whereas concrete structures they just um, they close the house actually. Mud structures allow this whole uh, Uh, living e ecosystem to thrive it's not only us mud is also there along with us in the house and this whole uh, the the characteristics of mud which keeps the house cool in the summer and warm in the winter inside 
we felt, so Ranjan and I both felt that decided that it will have to be a mud structure. Apart from the mud, the Maliks use sustainable materials for the rest of the construction in the house as well. Mangalore mud tiles were used for the roof. Terracotta tiles were used for the flooring. Both can further cool down the house during summers. Discarded wood from packaging was used to build stairs and other furniture. The 770 square single roof Rand Earth Home sits on a mud concrete trench foundation. It is a single space divided into a kitchen, living room and a mezzanine which has a study and a bedroom. The total cost of construction was around 25 lakhs. When we were planning for the house, we, we both Ranjan and I were very sure that we wanted to do away with certain conveniences that we were you know, getting used to. Uh, one of them was electricity, so having no electricity, uh, electricity not being available to us on with the switch of a button. I think that convenience we wanted to do away with. We didn't want taps in the house because in a scenario where we weren't sure how much water we are wasting and how what is our consumption, we felt that if each uh, for each consumption of water that we draw water actually helps us gauge how much we are using. Then we also wanted to do away with fossil fuels uh, in terms of our gas cylinder. We, so we, we don't use gas cylinder in this house, we don't use petrol. We also avoid as much as possible using ground water. So uh, our daily chores, for our daily chores we use rainwater. When we are out of rainwater for drinking purposes we have an atmospheric water generator uh, which you know we pull water from the humidity, it gives us water for usage. Somewhere we felt that nature gives us water in the form of rain which is so clean and so pure and we use it and we uh, throw the good, dirty water away. We felt that we need to give, give back water in the form that it's clean, in which nature can accept it back. So we wanted to create a grey water system where the water, the dirty water comes back to this land only. This grey water system has around 25 watt litres of water. What happens is when the water goes through the root system of typha and kenna, so there are bacteria, microbes that live on the root, uh, in the root zone, also on the surface of gravel. And what, when the water goes through this, all those nutrients, whether proteins, carbohydrates, fats, they break down. And as the water progressively goes through this, we let the water stay here for a few hours so that it kind of gets purified. Then we let the water out into this reservoir. And we realized that we were, you know, there were mosquitoes that were kind of growing in this water. So we put uh, guppy fish into it. And now guppy fish ensures that there are no mosquitoes. And it also tells us that the water is clean, the way nature wants it. And this water we use in our, uh, for our plants. couple follows a lifestyle based on circadian rhythm. The lifestyle is influenced by light which defines the sleep cycle. So we kind of uh, we wake up a little before the sunrise and we, we, we start winding down a little after sunset and we are becoming very aware of these cycles and we are also becoming aware of the fact that in a small little house like this this a, a bounty and abundance of energy that falls on the house in the form of heat, light, water, biological matter. We don't have to connect it, they're all connected. We just have to become part of that web of life. Is it difficult to live like this? Actually, after having moved here, we feel it's easier done than said. Um, once you, if you haven't done it, it seems radical and difficult, but if you do it, in hindsight, it just seems normal and natural and that's because you connect with your humanness and it's more natural than that living. 